Hello, everyone. This is Jeffrey Bershaw from Avant Destinations. Welcome to our What's New in Europe for 2018 and beyond. You should see this wonderful four panel screen here. If you have any questions at any point in time during this presentation, please feel free to type them in and we'll get to them at the end during our Q&A session. So I do have uh, Megan Ball, uh, one of our product managers, as well as Tammy Cortez and Mila Kickett uh, on this webinar with me today, and they're going to talk about their uh, destinations. Uh, we're going to kind of go all of the brochure uh, as far as organization is concerned. A wonderful picture of Greece, and uh, up at the top left, Italy, and the top right, uh, obviously the Netherlands down on the bottom left and Provence with the beautiful lavender on the bottom right. Uh, but we're going to do a quick introduction to Avanti destinations uh, for those of you who aren't too familiar with Avanti. Uh, this is a wonderful picture of Neuschwanstein Castle. This is not the cover of our brochure, but you can go to avantidestinations.com uh, under agent resources uh, down at the bottom there, it's a, a order brochures and download flyers uh, text link, and you click on that, and you'll it'll make it very obvious on, on what the next steps are as far as ordering brochures are concerned. So, essence of Europe uh, 2018 and 2019. That's um, what we've got uh, going on today. We're going to kind of go through the highlights uh, for the 2018-2019 product line. I have a, uh, currently do have a promotion, Go365, uh, really focused on um, you know winter travel, uh, trying to get people uh, to understand that you know traveling all year round is is wonderful. Uh, we also have a $50 commission through February uh, into February, February 29th. Uh, and uh, so anytime that you uh, create one of these bookings uh, in this uh, travel period, uh, you can apply for a $50 uh, bonus commission. Uh, something to think about here is, is that your, Europe is a wonderful winter destination, lots of festivals, art season, uh, there's uh, you know, uh, museums, there's no one there, or a lot less people there, I should say. Uh, and but, the other thing to think about is, is that in Latin America, specifically Central South America, as well as in Southeast Asia, uh, it's a wonderful time uh, to go, especially for those who are, you know, feeling the winter chill and, uh, you know, the, some of the horrendous weather that we've had going on uh, recently. These are sunny, warm, great beach destinations, culturally rich, uh, wonderful food, in certain parts of South America, wonderful wine. Uh, so it's just a, a good way to uh, get your clients uh, to experience the world uh, all year round. And just a little bit more as far as Monte destinations are concerned, we are your one-stop travel source. Uh, so air, uh, rental car in Europe, uh, transfers, picking your clients up from the airport, taking them to the hotel, delivering them to the rail station, lots of accommodations. We'll go through some of the new ones today. Uh, rail, of course, connecting uh, everything in Europe. Uh, we do a lot of pre and post cruise. That's the larger ships in the in, for Europe, uh, the Mediterranean, as well as the river cruise ports. Uh, so something to think about there. Small ship cruises for Europe really are focused on uh, Croatia, the Adriatic, uh, as well as Greece. Uh, whereas in Latin America, it's Patagonia and the Galapagos. Uh, we do some river cruise options, Yangtze and China, uh, as well as the the Mekong uh, and you know uh, Vietnam, Laos, and and uh, Cambodia. Be that as it may, we've got a lot of wonderful uh, destinations. Uh, we I'm going to kind of get into some of the new countries that we've added uh, the Baltics here in just a short bit. Uh, but as you can see, we've got Europe covered. Uh, you know, we're really good at connecting everything together. So if your clients wanted to go to London and go up to Edinburgh and then fly down to Rome, uh, that's something that we can do. Take the train from Rome to Florence and up into Venice and then fly home. These are all things that we do day in and day out. So connecting everything together is, is our uh, specialty. I talked a little bit about pre and post cruise, but as you can see, uh, we've got a lot of options. If you're looking at our uh, brochure, 
you'll see things with the pre and post cruise uh, symbol. Uh, so just something to think about. Basically, all of the major uh, ports uh, and uh, river cruise ports, as well as large ports. So if it's in the Baltics or you know uh, Southampton, going up into London, uh, or you know Paris or uh, you know Barcelona, all of those. So just something to think about when you're doing pre and post cruise. You can, we do a lot of sightseeing options. Uh, there's cultural options. You get your clients a little bit more time uh, in the in the major cities that they're visiting uh, before or after their cruise. Uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. So what's new in Europe for uh, 2018 and beyond? We've added a ton of new hotels. You'll see some of our favorites today. Uh, we have a, a plethora of recommended vacations, whether these are the larger uh, full vacations. Uh, this is just, and you'll, we'll you know, review more of those later on uh, with the product team here in just a minute. Uh, we have new destinations, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Tallinn and Estonia, uh, Riga and Latvia, and Vilnius in, in Lithuania, and the Peloponnese uh, in, in Greece. Uh, and Tammy's going to cover that a little bit later on as well. And you know, we're constantly uh, looking for new culinary options, uh, uh, active experiences, so some soft adventure as well as bringing on more and more private guide options uh, throughout uh, Europe. So we're going to go into England first. This is a wonderful snow shot. Uh, it doesn't snow very often in London, but sometimes it does, and the buses still get around. Uh, anyway, I'm going to hand it over to Megan, and she's going to talk a little bit about England and then get on to the rest of her countries. Megan, it's all yours. time today uh, to see what's new in Europe. Starting at the very beginning of the brochure, if you happen to have a copy with you, in England on page seven, we have Enchanting England, uh, new RVP for pretty much Southern England. We've got London, Oxford, Stratford-upon-Avon, and Bath. You know, your clients can do this via a car rental after leaving London, or we can arrange for a private um, car and driving guides. As a side note, I personally have driven in England, in Scotland, in Ireland, and uh, I found it very easy. Um, kind of the hardest part was just deciding I was going to do it and actually getting in the car on the other side. <laughs> but once you start going, it's a fun adventure. Uh, something to note with this package is one of the inclusions is a chauffeured uh, punting tour in Oxford. If you're not familiar with that, punting is sort of almost like a gondola ride, just very basic. It's in a, it's gonna be like in a short, kind of long, simple boat and with a person standing at the back with a long oar. Um, while these destinations you can visit year round, punting isn't necessarily something you're gonna do in January. So that inclusion is seasonal. It's gonna be more for uh, in the summertime and end of spring, beginning of fall, but um, everything else you could do year round. Go back one. So we have a few new tours in London. Um, in particular, I want to point out this Borough Market Tour, which is a walking tour of one of London's uh, biggest and most popular food markets, which is really exciting. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun place to be during the day or at night. There's a, a, a high energy. And uh, if you have clients who are Harry Potter fans, this is like right in the area where uh, some filming was happening or even where there were places that were, um, they were the inspiration for building some of the sets. And then if you have maybe honeymooners or somebody celebrating something special, we have a London by helicopter tour uh, new this year. Very exciting. Moving up to Scotland, uh, just want to mention a couple of new tours that we have in uh, Edinburgh. So we have a Taste of Scotland show, which is really interesting. It's an evening of uh, the culture that we think of with Scotland, um, bagpipes and, and kilts and storytelling at Prestonfield House, which is a really fabulous hotel just on the edge of the city. And then we also have a Loch Ness cruise available for clients staying in Inverness. So this is sailing, though. Is it sailing or just? It's a, it's like a. Okay. Just a boat with a motor. Yes. Okay. 
in Edinburgh, I want to point out a couple of hotels that uh, you may be wondering about. One is the B plus B Edinburgh. So that is how they pronounce it. It's not B and B, it's B plus B. It is a three star, more kind of like a three star superior. It's an actual hotel in a very beautiful building, as you can see from the images on your screen. Uh, this is not a typical bed and breakfast. It's just a, a special name that they've chosen for the hotel. And a, and a good value too. Absolutely. We also have the courtyard, um, and what I like about this property is that it's, it is walkable to Princess Street, the Royal Mile, but it's also not very far from the Hertz rental office that is city center. So if you have clients that are only staying for maybe one or two nights and then they're picking up a car and, and driving to the rest of Scotland, this might be a good option for them location-wise. And then moving uh, swiftly to Ireland. So if you have your brochure, we're on page 27 now, and we have a new package here, Classic Ireland, Go North. So this is, um, can you go to the next? Sure. So this is a really fun uh, itinerary, really good for people that have been to Ireland once before, or maybe looking for something a little bit different. Uh, so typically, uh, first timers will head south and see the Ring of Kerry, this is kind of the same idea, but to the north uh, of the island. So it's going to include Ireland and Northern Ireland. Uh, right now, driving from one to the one country to the other is seamless. You, it's somewhat similar to from, like if you were driving from one state to another and you see the sign, uh, it'll just say, welcome to Northern Ireland. You know, of course there is a difference in currency, difference in flag. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's um, the feeling there's it's not a big production. There's really no difference. Um, but then once you're up in the in Northern Ireland and then the northern part of the island itself, the scenery is very um, Ireland in general is the scenery is very beautiful. You know, with rugged coastlines, but it's very dramatic in this area. Um, it's going to feel maybe a little bit less touristy, especially considering maybe perhaps the Ring of Kerry. And um, maybe like a small taste of the adventure, you could say, with uh, seeing the Giant's Causeway and the rope bridge that is up there. We had a group of people from our office do almost the same itinerary about a year ago, and they came back raving. They said, one of them I talked to yesterday, he said it's the best fam I had ever been on. Um, and he's been on quite a few. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah we have a webinar on our website that uh, goes follows that itinerary, by the way. And you can also do a private car. Uh, driving guide. So that's uh, always something to think about when you're when you have clients who have the budget. Uh, it really is a more much more personal experience going into France. Yes, France. So we're on page 35 in your brochure, and highlights of France is really just a good example. If you have clients to say, I want to go to France. I know I want to go to Paris. I'm not sure what else to do, or what are what are the big things that I know I shouldn't miss this is a good suggestion for them. So obviously starting in Paris, but then hitting uh, Normandy, Avignon in Provence, and then Nice in the French Riviera. So kind of the major areas that people really wanna see, um, particularly if they're a first time visitor to France. Um, so in Normandy, we have a lot of hotels. I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a, a great, base to start with, and then they can customize it further if they'd like to. Yeah, I think that's important. All of these, uh, we call them recommended vacations, are really suggested itineraries. And so making sure that your clients can you know, update, or you can update them for your clients and customize them completely is something that you do day in and day out. So Absolutely. always keep be aware of that. So we have some, uh, some fun tours. In Paris, we have a new afternoon tea option. Afternoon tea is not just something that the Brits do. You can find this uh, throughout um, different areas of, of Europe and in Paris especially. So we have one option for tea at Angelina, which is a very famous tea room uh, right close to the Louvre. And then also an option at the Ritz Palace Hotel, which recently reopened. In Bordeaux, I, I, these are paired together, just as I mentioned, if you weren't aware that last summer the train tracks between Paris and Bordeaux were upgraded, you can now get from city center Paris to city center Bordeaux in exactly two hours, which means you can get from Paris to Bordeaux and back in the same amount of time as it takes you to drive one way out to Mont-Saint-Michel. 
So we also have it, um, in the brochure a new tour to Bordeaux from Paris. You can do Bordeaux as a day trip now super easily. Um, on page 40, uh, excuse me, 43, you'll find the Champagne Retreat. We have a couple of options in Champagne, just in the different small towns that are there. This one is in uh, Vignay, which is not far from Epernay. It's staying at the La Bricoterie, which is a really beautiful four-star superior hotel. It's nice because you're not far from the town of Epernay um, with the Moet Champagne House. Uh, you can do a tour there. It's only a five to 10 minute drive. And yet the hotel is out uh, in the country surrounded by vineyards. So you have a nice kind of calm area to be in just for a couple of nights. This package is with a car rental, but we can arrange for private car and driver if your clients uh, are, are wanting that instead. So a couple more tours. Uh, or switching back to Paris. We have flying high over Paris. This is a private helicopter experience. It's more than just a helicopter ride though. It includes a hotel pickup and drop off and a gourmet lunch as well. So this would be a really special option for people um, going on a honeymoon, let's say, or celebrating an anniversary. Also in Burgundy, we have some new private tours departing from both Bonne and Dijon. And this is a really nice area. It's not just uh, it's not just wine and vineyards in Burgundy. They have a uh, very famous abbey, um, UNESCO protected sites. Uh, it's really beautiful area. And great food. Absolutely. Um, one hotel I wanted to point out in Paris is La Roche. Uh, I'm just mentioning this really has been getting some press here in the US. Uh, it's a new hotel in a really fantastic location on the right bank, not far from the Louvre. Um, it's I mentioned it's called La Roche Hotel and Spa. Sometimes in the write-up, it's written as Rock and Spa. So if you see something about the Rock and Spa Hotel, that is what this is, La Roche. And it's very different from your typical five-star hotel in Paris. Normally, those are old palace hotels, very opulent, classic decor. And here, it's um, definitely very different. This is perfect for your millennial clients who are wanting five-star accommodations. Okay, I mentioned in Normandy, we have a few new hotels. I'm really excited. Uh, Normandy is, is every year picking up more and more speed, and it's a really special place. We have some new hotels, one in Enflore, uh, the Maison de l'Air, and then in Bayou, we have the Churchill, which is a three-star hotel right in the center of the city. Um, that's a great option for clients that uh, are on a budget or want to be based in Bayou to be able to do some of the shared tours that we have to offer. Um, also in Bayou, we now have the Villa Lara, which is a really beautiful, beautiful hotel. It's uh, almost to even five-star quality, and right in the center of the city next to the uh, cathedral, and there's a little park area. Uh, gorgeous. And then going down to Spain, we're going to hand it over to uh, Tammy, and she's going to share all of the fantastic stuff to do in Southern Europe, starting hey. off with the Splendors. Hello, everybody. Um, so, first uh, new thing to talk about in Spain would be um, this recommended vacation package, new for 2018, the Splendors of Spain. Uh, we have a very popular package already, which is Barcelona, Madrid, and Seville. We just decided to make a longer recommended vacation and squeeze Valencia in there because it's such a great place. Um, beautiful port city with great paella and uh, lots to see arts and science museums and everything like that. So, this is a new. 10 night RVP um, by train, so first class train between all the cities. And then just quickly to mention just a couple of new hotels we added, Barcelona is always um, our biggest city in Barcelona, so we have a couple of new five stars. Uh, the Hotel Ohm here is um, a very stylish five star, um, close to the boutiques, it has a beautiful rooftop swimming pool and bar, great spa, which you can't see in these photos, but great new addition. Very and modern. Very modern, yes, in, in addition to the palace that we've been selling for quite a while, which is very traditional. Um, another one is the One Hotel. Um, this one also has a beautiful rooftop terrace, as you can see. So you have great views um, of the town, whether it's over breakfast or in the evenings. Um, they also have a, a really great spa and pool area as well. So plenty of amenities for those upscale clients staying in Barcelona. Um, and then moving quickly to Italy, 
always lots of product to mention each year in Italy. So uh, really quickly in Rome, I just wanted to mention we do finally have an apartment property in Rome, um, the Trianon Borgo Pio mm -hmm. apartment. Yay! After lots and lots of searching. Um, it's an apartment, apart hotel, so they do um, have a breakfast room on the roof and uh, serve breakfast daily, and they do have apartment units which can fit up to six people. So great for families that are looking to get all in one room and spend time together. So that's a new addition. And then a couple new experiences. Um, we have several different restaurants that we use for people wanting to book dinners ahead of time, but we also have this new experience, which is a little bit more upscale if you're looking to go to somebody's home. We have a chef who has his very stylish penthouse um, overlooking the rooftops of Rome, so he will actually create um, a four-course upscale dinner for your clients while they relax and look at the rooftops. So it's a private experience in a home, which is very nice. And then we have a, a new fishing tour in Sorrento, which is not only about the fishing, because that only appeals to at certain people, but you're out on the water on a boat, beautiful, beautiful area of um, the Amalfi Coast in Sorrento, and then afterwards you get to, of course, eat the fresh fish that you've caught. So I think the best part of the day is actually the lunch that's included. It's a full day tour out on the water, so something different that we've never offered before. So Sal and Franco must be some characters. Sal and Franco, yes. <laughs> Very entertaining, great cooks, and great fishermen. <laughs> Um, a couple other experiences that we added for next year would be, or this year, keep forgetting we're already here. Um, in Naples, we have um, a couple experiences with uh, Mariana, who is a, a local lady who lives in Naples, and we have a private market tour with her where she'll take you through the market and, and collect the, all the ingredients that you need and do a cooking class in her apartment. So that one is on private basis. And then we have a dinner in her home as well. So this is the opportunity to go Inside of a local's home, she has a beautiful apartment overlooking the bay, so you're staring out at the water. Um, very, very great views from there, but you have an opportunity to actually have dinner with other people um, up to about eight, I believe it is, that she she lets in. So it's a great, very small, intimate um, feeling having a nice dinner in her home. And then we go down, uh, down south, my favorite part of Italy. I love the south. Um, this new splendor is Southern Italy is a nine night package that combines, it's a very complete package. There's lots of, lots of things included here. So it includes starting in Rome and you go down to Sorrento. So the Amalfi Coast is increasing um, lots and lots of traffic every year. So it definitely has um, lots of press. A lot of people know about the Amalfi Coast. So you go down, go down to Sorrento and spend a couple of nights there, um, see the coast, have some tastings, go out to the countryside, um, taste some limoncello, some mozzarella, all of that um, on the way down you'll have a private tour of Pompeii on the way because you can't miss that and then after you stay on the Amalfi Coast which is very well known you kind of make your way to the other side of the heel of the boot of Italy um, over towards Puglia region um, along the way you'll stop a night in Matera which is the photo there on the slide very very unique cave town um, unlike any other place that I've visited in Italy so Definitely worth a stop. Um, stay a night there and then head over to um, down to Lecce and then up to Pisano. So while you're in Lecce, very, very beautiful Baroque town full of beautiful architecture, pedestrian streets, really warm, warm people. You'll have a great cooking class there with a lady named Gianna who has a lovely little cooking class and then make your way up to um, up to Pisano, Savaletta de Pisano, which is right on the right on the coast. So beautiful beautiful sea, sandy beaches, so very complete, lots of things. We've got ruins, beaches, and everything. So um, Clear up the Tuscany. Clear up the Tuscany. So heading back up, uh, just a couple of quick mentions of new properties that we added, um, some upscale options in Tuscany. This is the Relay Borgo Santo Pietro. Um, very, very beautiful property, um, small luxury hotel, only 14 rooms, surrounded by Beautiful countryside, and as you can see, the decor is amazing. So it's a great what new addition. The town to get to from it is just north of Montalcino, so great area for wine as well. Um, but yeah, I mean Florence is definitely um, still an option. Drive, we can go down it. or from private. Siena. Yeah, yes, yeah. easily done by car rental, or we have private drivers, of course, private transfers as well. 
we added another new one um, in the newer area. This is um, Principe di Piemonte up in Via Reggio, which we haven't really offered very many hotels up in that area. So you're right on the water, very close to um, visit Luca, to visit Tiza, or just stay at the beautiful hotel and enjoy the, the rooftop swimming pool and go down to the beach. So that's another great new addition. And then we do have some new uh, new experiences in um, out of Florence into the countryside as well. Chianti is always a very, very popular place to visit for people staying in Florence. So the Chianti tour here mentioned on this slide is one that we actually created um, trying to offer something that's not the, the big bus shared tour and not the private one that might be a little more expensive for people who can't afford it. So we have this small group tour that is maximum of 14 people in a small minibus going out and visiting the countryside, tasting wines and uh, includes lunch as well. So it's a great, um, great affordable option. Yeah. The bike. And then we have another one that is for, this is a, a shared tour, but people that want to get out to Chianti, not only taste the wine, but maybe get a little exercise as well. So get on a bicycle and then ride out through the countryside. So they're not going to have 30 people riding bikes together. No, no, it's still not going to be a huge group, but um, yeah, it's just it's yeah. a shared tour with yeah. others. So. Um, even more experiences. So again, talking a little bit more about Chianti, we have a new tour that is a private one. Um, so this is on private basis. You go out into the countryside, of course, you see the, the rolling hills, the vineyards, and then you have a nice um, truffle hunting with a dog. So you go out and see how they actually find those truffles. And then at the end, enjoy a delicious four, four course lunch. Truffle themed lunch. Truffle themed mm -hmm. lunch. So taste it all the way through. And then uh, very quickly, we have a new private cooking class um, heading up into Lake Como. So this is in Northern Italy, um, new private experience with Antonella. So in a friendly atmosphere, you'll have an afternoon with her. And then we have some new wine packages in all over Italy, actually. We, we have um, previously offered a Villa wine package in Tuscany, um, which has basically just been focused on Tuscany, a three night package, but we've expanded and kind of enriched the package. So we have now this new Villa wine program that is offered in four different areas for people, kind of with the idea that there are more and more people traveling that are really, really focused on wine. They know their wine. So people that know the, the wines of Italy not only know the Chianti in Tuscany that is so famous, but they would mind, might want to visit Veneto and, and taste the, the Prosecco um, or go to Piedmont and taste the Barolos or down to Puglia. Um, there's lots and lots of wonderful wines sprinkled all throughout Italy that people really um, should be tasting and not only spend time in Tuscany. So we've expanded. We have quite a few. I haven't been mentioning all the page numbers, sorry, but on the new brochure, um, this Villa Wine Package is on pages 92 and 93. So we just have a handful of properties mentioned in the brochure just as a sample, but we do have quite a few more, quite a few more than are actually in the brochure. And all so, over Italy. They're all in Italy from north to south. They include dinners, a um, couple of wine tastings, uh, wine pairing, so um, good stuff from north to south. This um, package, we actually introduced this uh, last year in 2017, but we've just kind of enhanced it, made it a longer package, and added a stay in Turin at the beginning. So just um, heading across northern Italy for people who've maybe already done the Rome, Florence, Venice, and are looking to see some more smaller destinations. This is good for couples, um, very small um, places along the way. Lake Orta is very, very cute, um, much less travel than Lake Como. Um, and then Gavi, which is a great wine area. So you stay up in a five-star property, have wine tasting and a very gourmet dinner, and then go over to Porta Venere, which is a beautiful little coastal town just outside of the Cinque Terre and is the picture there on the slide. So lots of food and wine along the way and nice seven-night package. Then quickly heading over to Croatia, um, I think we're going to our third year of bringing Croatia back, which has been very, very, very successful. Um, lots of people are looking to spend time on the beautiful Dalmatian coast, understandably, so hopping the islands uh, along the way for next year. We have one new package that basically is focused on Dubrovnik. Um, could be for somebody that just has a few nights to see Croatia or possibly doing like a pre and post cruise and wants to do something a little upscale. This package is a four-night package, um, staying in a five-star hotel. Um, you'll have private transfer um, upon arrival and departure. And then you have a guide um, to take you on a couple of private excursions. So you'll do a walking tour inside of Dubrovnik, uh, including walking around the city walls. And then you'll go down to the little town of Kaptat, which is a cute little 
village just south of Dubrovnik and do a cooking class down there as well. Oh, that's nice. Well, and sunny great. Greece. Um, in Greece, we actually offered, um, we added an entire new region. So we are offering the beautiful region of the Peloponnese, um, which we haven't done in the past. I know the islands are extremely popular with everybody. So, um, but I think the Peloponnese has so much to offer as well. Maybe people have already done the islands and are looking for something new. Um, the region itself has lots of beautiful nature, so lots of activities to get outside um, for those active people. This package is basically starting in Athens, spending two nights, and then you have private transfers. Um, first, you'll go out to the ta little town of Napoleon, a cute little coastal town about two hours from Athens. Stay there for one night, have a dinner and a walking tour, and then you'll head, your, head out to the Peloponnese coast. We have four different properties in the brochure. Um, let me find the page number, page 118. So four different properties out on the Peloponnese, um, all sprinkled along little coastal towns. So very, very cute, right on the water, beautiful views. Some have apartments, so they're great for families. Um, we have the beautiful five-star resort of Costa Navarino, which is right on the Navarino Bay. Um, all kinds of amenities out there. So the package is just six nights, so if people do want to add on the islands afterwards, they can do that as well. But some of the activities out in the Peloponnese area, we have some active um, tours, as I mentioned, and some sea kayaking tours, um, hiking tours, and we also have stand-up paddle boards. So for those people that want to get out and explore the nature, it's a beautiful place to do that. Uh, so and then as well, there's lots of ruins that were basically empty when I went out exploring um, earlier this year in April, kind of went went touring around to see what was out here and couldn't believe the, the amazing, amazing ruins. Some of them are still undergoing exc excavating right now. So, but there was nobody around. So there's no queuing, no waiting in line, just mm -hmm. you're strolling around with your guide and it's, it's pretty amazing out there. So, uh, so these are two of the tours that we'll have um, in that area mm -hmm. as well. And then talking about the islands, um, we have a couple new tours out there. We have lots of food and wine tours on the island, but we've decided to add a couple um, couple walking tours for people that want to get outside with a guide and just kind of hike. The first one, the private caldera hike, is walking between Fira and Ia on the caldera side. So you're walking right along the rim of the island with gorgeous views and just learning about the, the history of the island with your guide. And then the second one, Ia's hidden treasure, is walking tour is mostly focused on um, in and around the town of Ia, which is the northernmost part of the island. So going to some secret spots that the guide wants to take you to, tasting wines and, and getting some great views. Um, and then on the island every year, we try to add more and more hotels. Uh, mm -hmm. This Desaterra Suites is a new uh, cute little 10 room uh, boutique hotel, four star property that is actually on the other side of the island. So away from kind of the crowds of, of Fira where everybody seems to uh, gravitate towards the main island, the main town on the island. Um, so beautiful property. So the people need to book these well in advance. Santorini is so popular and every year becomes more and more popular. It's always on the top 10 most romantic, top 10 places you should go before you die, top 10 rooms, you know, luxury of places. So it's like, it makes a lot of lists. So it fills up quickly because the island only has so many hotels and people from around the world are definitely all trying to get into the island. So I would say book in advance, <laughs> book in advance is definitely um, a good suggestion for Santorini especially. Um, the Ambassador, the other one we have featured here on this slide is a, a five-star hotel. It is also in a different area. Um, we still have, we have plenty of hotels in Sierra and E on that side of the island, but this Ambassador Hotel is located in the small town of um, the village of Akrotiri, which has um, beautiful little archaeological ruins, and uh, you still have views of the sea, as you can see from the image on the right there from the room. Yeah, very gorgeous new addition. And that's it for me. For now. And then we're going up to uh, Switzerland, and uh, we're going to go back to Megan Ball. Hello, everyone. So if you if you do have your brochure on page 127, I have some new packages in Switzerland now. So the first one on the slide actually isn't new. It's the same thing that was from last year, but we just tweaked it a little bit. So the first few inclusions are the same. Last year, we had a, a private half-day guided tour of the Charlie, uh, Charlie Chaplin Museum with lunch, and now it's just the entrance. So your clients can go on their own time uh, when the tour 
when seeing the museum will fit best within their itinerary. Then also added is an entrance to New Food Museum. It's right on um, Lake Geneva between Montreux and Lausanne. And it's a really fun museum where they have, it's, it's all about food and it's kind of like, where does our food come from? How does food affect our culture? How does food affect our bodies and health? Uh, with interactive areas for kids, so this would be a, a fun. This would be a very fun one to do. Experience. Very swift Very swift. They also have cooking classes on site. So if your clients are in the area and they're looking for something with cooking, that is something that you can special request uh, with one of our reservations agents, and we'll find out what class they have while your clients are in that region. Also on Lake Geneva is Lausanne, which is a fantastic city to visit year-round. We have a, um, a sweet little two-night package with a private walking tour because the town is kind of built on a hillside up from the lake. So many people will go, maybe even arrive. Uh, I arrived Lausanne by a boat uh, from another city. And then from down on the lakeside, you have the Olympic Museum, which is amazing. I can't say enough good things about it. Admittedly, I am a sports fan, but even someone who just has an average interest in the Olympics would find this very, very interesting. So entrance they, to the museum, again, they can do it on their own time at their own speed. And then use their uh, Lausanne card that they'll get upon Lausanne. arrival and um, go up the hill to the city center for a walking tour. In the middle of the country, we have a new uh, summer in the Swiss Alps package. So this is based in Wengen, and this is very seasonal. It's just going to be June through September, uh, hence the name of the package. <laughs> so two nights in Wengen, they'll um, they'll do a self-guided excursion to Mount Schiltorn. Uh, some people call it the James Bond Mountain. It's uh, one of the uh, places where a lot of scenes from on Her Majesty's Secret Service were filmed. So they have a big uh, exhibit about James Bond uh, movies at the top, as well as a cliff walk and a rotating restaurant. This excursion is included on the Swiss Travel Pass in 2018. So even if someone is not booking this package, but they purchase a Swiss Travel Pass, uh, by using a day on the pass, they can go up to Mount Schiltorn. Also this year uh, is included is um, the Stanzerhorn Mountain, which is very easy to do from Lucerne. That one's a fun one to do in the summer um, if you're in Lucerne, because then you it's an open air cable car, which is not really typical. Um, so this that would be a fun one for people really wanting to see outdoors and nature. And then lastly, we have scenic lakes of Italy and Switzerland. So this is combining Como and Lugano. Very easy to do. It's a less than 40 minutes on the train. So we have two, uh, two nights in Como with a private Lake Como tour and a three-course dinner. Then on day three in the morning, they take a train to Lugano, and in the afternoon, a risotto cooking class with Lake Cruz. And there's a restaurant on the other side of Lake Lugano from the town of Lugano where this lovely couple greets you. You learn how to make risotto. Then when everyone's done, everyone sits down and tastes the risotto and um, decides who, who did the best, <laughs> whose risotto tastes best, and have a full lunch. And then also included is a Ticino ticket. This is something that everyone that stays in, um, in Lugano at any hotel is provided a ticket for public transportation in the region. So they'll use that ticket and meet a private, their guide somewhere and do a private tour. So private Ticino tour, Ticino is the name of the Italian speaking region in Switzerland. And they have the services of a private guide to do whatever they want. So they could stay in Lugano for a walking tour of the city. There are some um, hills in, in Lugano that have funiculars to the top with really stunning panoramic views. Or they could go to any other um, a number of nearby towns like Bellinzona, not far on the train. It's a really, uh, really pretty city that has UNESCO protected castles. There's one smack in the heart of the city. People walk around it every day. You can walk inside. You can still walk on top of the walls of this castle. Um, they could go to Ascona, which is known as the Pearl of Ticino. It's on Lake Maggiore. Or they could even go up to the Verzasca Valley and see this fantastic emerald green river that's just Sort of, you can't even believe it until you see it with your own eyes. Yeah, it's really good just to think about how much stuff there is to do in that region. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's uh, amazing. Yeah. And so you're really not going to run into very many Americans there either. Yeah. Uh, so going over to Germany and to uh, Mila, 
all of you. That's yeah. also a beautiful picture of Yeah, it is. Hello, everyone. Um, we're going to start in Berlin with the new experience, the experiences that we've added. Um, so we now have a Jewish Berlin walking tour that covers the Jewish quarter. Um, includes all the old sides, like the old synagogue, but also shows how the Jewish community now revitalized this area and uh, visits the, the new synagogue and the Jewish school as well. Um, and then we have added a Berlin culinary walking tour. This is a shared tour. Um, the Jewish walking tour is also a shared tour. The culinary tour really um, walks mostly through the um, area of Mitte and Prenzlauer Berg, and you get to try different foods. Of course, the famous curry is pictured um, here on the slide and some pastries and also um, try some Turkish food that has made its way into the Berlin food scene as well. Um, then we have a few more and uh, more exclusive experiences. The private Berlin shopping tour is uh, very good for yeah, people um, interested in shopping and more exclusive, more high end. So the guide will take the clients through the Hackschemarkt area and Mitte to find local designers, interesting boutiques and hidden shops and really give them a local experience. Moving on to Nuremberg, we have added a private Nuremberg history tour that really covers everything that Nuremberg has to offer history-wise. So the old town, the castle, the churches, the market square and all that, but also the Third Reich history with the Nazi party rally grounds and the documentation center of the Nuremberg trials. From Nuremberg, we've added the private Bamberg tour. So this is a day trip from Nuremberg with private transfers and then a private tour of Bamberg once you get there, again, including the Old Town, which is the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the castle, the Rothery, and um, also a smoked beer tasting is included in this. And then on the uh, way back to Nuremberg, you, um, the clients are going to stop at the birth house of Levi Strauss. Nice. In Munich? In Munich, we have also a foodie walking tour. This is a private tour and um, it includes a walk over the market where you're going to try different Munich foods and you're actually going to start off with a traditional Bavarian breakfast, which is pictured as the Weisswurst and the pretzel. Um, and then throughout the tour, you um, walk through the English garden and end up in the beer garden where you try different sausages and cheeses and pretzels and, of beer course, and well. beer, yeah. <laughs> right? The Munich way, the very way. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's a new five-star hotel in Munich. The Rumors Hotel is just opened in October 2017, and this is a very um, glamorous, luxurious hotel, um, but still the rooms are cozy and intimate. The hotel has an award-winning Japanese restaurant and a luxury spa with an infinity pool and a cinema in the spa. Yeah. Um, in the Black Forest region, we have added a regional highlight uh, for the Lake TTZ. Um, this package includes two nights accommodation at the Maritime Hotel TTZ, a Black Forest card, and a private hiking tour and daily breakfast. Important to say here is that the there's two options for the private hiking tour. Um, they can choose between a two-hour, about four-mile hike around the lake um, with views of the Feldberg Mountain and a stop at a cafe to try some Black Forest cake or they can do a three-hour hike to Hintertzatten, where there's the, the ski jump. They can visit that and then return or take the train back from there. So then we're moving on to Austria um, in Vienna. That's an amazing picture, yeah. <laughs> um, in Vienna, we have added a few exclusive private experiences. Um, the first one is a visit of the Spanish Riding School um, that takes the clients into the building and behind the scenes of the school and its history, and also they get to see some of the horses as they're in the stall. Oh, it's amazing to see. Right, yeah. And alone the architecture of the building is yeah. worth visiting, I think. And then, yeah, if you're interested in, in, in the history of that, it's a super great experience. Um, we have the uh, private Viennese Wine Tavern Serenade in Vienna. This is uh, an evening program that starts with a ride on the Ferris wheel to get a view of Vienna. And then there's a private transfer to the village of Grinzing that is known for, for its wine taverns. And then there's a dinner at the tavern um, and wine tasting, obviously. And then there's local music at these wine taverns, too. Cool. Yeah, then we have this uh, package for the, of the, the, for the wine region, exactly. Taste of Baja Valley. This includes private round trip transfers from Vienna. It's about an hour away from Vienna, Vienna. Two nights accommodations there, and then a private tour with the wine tasting, of course, and a dinner in the valley as well. And the tour stops at the Melk Abbey and the Dernstein Castle, too. 
Yeah, so we can move on to the Czech Republic. Um, I just wanted to mention one of the hotels that we have added, the Three Storks. It's a five-star hotel. It's a pretty new boutique hotel, 20 rooms. It's very good for couples, located near the castle. And the, the hotel just offers a perfect balance of Renaissance interior and contemporary design. And I think it's a, it's a great property. A very fun new experience in the Czech Republic is the beer spa. <laughs> Yeah, so you actually get to bathe in beer. <laughs> <laughs> the package also includes the massage and unlimited consumption of beer while you're there. So right next to the tub that you're sitting in is a beer tab, and you just keep pouring beer into your mug. Just don't drink the one that you're bathing in. <laughs> they get a massage. They get a massage. Um, <laughs> probably, maybe yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, I think it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then we're uh, getting to the new destinations, the Baltic countries of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. They're a little bit off the usual European tourist path and are easy, can easily be connected to Scandinavia and um, Germany and Poland by train, Scandinavia by ferry. And they have a lot of um, old history. They're all former Soviet countries and are relatively undiscovered by tourists yet. Um, to combine all these countries where we mostly feature the, the capital Tallinn, Riga, and Vilnius, in each of them, we have developed the Best of the Baltic package that is um, yeah, a private tour, includes all private transfers, three nights in Tallinn, two nights in Riga, two nights in Vilnius, a private walking tour of Tallinn, um, the Riga city card, and then you have a private driver and guide that will take you from Tallinn to Riga and then from Riga to Vilnius and stop on the way for more sightseeing. So it includes the Tureda and Sigolda castles. Um, as well as then the crosses in Lithuania. Lithuania is going to be hot this year because it was just featured on Better Late Than Never. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then coming to Scandinavia briefly, um, two new experiences in Helsinki. Again, we have a Finnish food walk, so a culinary focused tour. This is a shared tour. Um, it starts at the market hall and will they have Finnish coffee? Um, coffee is very important in, in Finnish culture. Um, and then really they get to try different Finnish foods from cured salmon and reindeer to the phaser chocolates that are really famous and some pastries as well. And uh, diving even deeper into the Finnish culture is the Sunsets on a Bike Tour. Um, you ride around Helsinki on a bike, which is rather easy to do because it's very flat, and learn all about the sauna culture and then in the end um, go and sweat in the sauna for a little while. Take after, after your bike ride. Right. After your bike ride, yeah, because it's very relaxing. Um, hotels in Finland, we have the Glow Art Hotel, a four-star property, which is pretty new as well. It's very trendy, um, located in the design district. and it's, The building is Art Nouveau, but then as you can see, the interior is, is a lot more modern. And it has a lot of um, balconies and arched windows and is known for the innovative restaurant that they have. Another great hotel. Another great hotel, Hotel Haven, the five-star hotel, um, very luxurious boutique hotel overlooking the harbor. And this, again, is also in an Art Nouveau building and has a very cozy interior. The lounge has a fireplace where you can meet up and have a drink. So, yeah. Uh, briefly, moving over to Stockholm in Sweden, I just wanted to mention again the Hotel C Stockholm. Um, it's located in the city center. It's a very great location for people who are traveling by train or coming from the airport. And this hotel is very famous for the ice bar. So in that ice bar, you go in with a warm poncho, you get drinks made in, made in glasses made out of ice. So that's one of the, the cool things to do at this hotel. And one more hotel in Stockholm is the At Six, which is a five-star hotel. It's also brand new. It's very en vogue and elegant. And um, yeah, really the contemporary art meets the design there. And yeah, it has great views of Stockholm. It's a very large hotel, so high high building. Um, centrally located. But centrally located, yes, and very spacious. And there we go. That was a good quick tour of what's new in Europe. I should mention again, there is a lot more, uh, and you know, we only have so much time. So what we're going to do is uh, we've opened it up to questions, and I'm going to get through some of the questions. Uh, here in just a minute, but you can visit us online at montedestinations.com. Uh, we're still kind of uploading some of these new options uh, that we've covered today as far as packages are concerned, um, but a, a lot of this FIT stuff is completely bookable. Uh, you can always send us an email at requests at Avanti Destinations. That's for a new quote or an existing quote, 
If you don't want to give us a call, you can give us a call. 800-422-5053 is our general number. So, um, just quickly, you know, there's a couple of good questions here, uh, but, you know, like, you know, some questions as far as bicycling options in, in uh, Spain. Um, we've got a lot of bicycle options throughout uh, Europe. Keep, you guys keep on adding more and more and more. So I think that you know there's there's lots of different options there, um, and then there you know maybe talk a little bit about some of the the soft, you know we talked a little bit about the soft adventure uh, stuff that you can do outside of the cities, but uh, you know there's there's lots to see and do uh, whether it be a bicycle tour or a walking tour uh, throughout Europe. Uh, walks in Italy tours. I'm not really sure what they're asking there, but maybe talk a little bit, Tammy, about the the walking options or the, the you know the they're not, they're not really treks uh, per se, but you know you have some in in uh, Chianti, and you talked a little bit about it uh, in the slides earlier. Yeah, I don't know exactly um, the walks in Italy tours that are referenced in the specific question there, but. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we offer a wide variety of walking tours because a lot of the towns that we offer are best seen by walking around the pedestrian streets and that type of thing. So, um, like everywhere. you met in the countryside Florence, as well. Venice, um, Vienna, San Gimignano, all, yeah. pretty much all the small towns. Um, Tuscany and Malfi Coast are best done on foot, so we offer lots and lots of them. There's something specific. I mean, we do, do special requests if you're trying to. Uh, mirror somebody else's specific walking tour, we can always do that as well. All right, I think there's a, a good question here um, uh, by Norman as far as the, uh, the packages are concerned. Um, I always try to stay away from the, using the term packages because they're really just suggested itineraries. Um, you know, these, uh, day in, day out, people are giving us a call or uh, changing their uh, the, the itinerary online, adding a couple of days here or taking away a few days here. So it's completely customizable. It's just these are our recommendations. If you were to say go north into Ireland uh, and experience Northern Ireland uh, in the uh, in the in the wild Atlantic way, as as, uh, as they're referring to it on the uh, Atlantic coastline. So these are just things that you know we're um, recommending, but they're not packaged. It's still an FIT experience. Uh, so there's you know very seldom will you find where it's an economic advantage of uh, taking the package as is. Uh, but we talked a little bit about the Ireland go north and the um, you know and kind of the distinguishment between the private car plus driver. Uh, a little bit, maybe there's a little bit of concern there about what exactly that entails. Yeah, so when we mention, um, let's, let's look right at, at the Ireland. So it says uh, that you can have a car rental or a private car plus driving guide. Whenever we say private car and driver or private car and driving guide, we, we mean that um, that is for your clients to be driven around in someone else's car by someone else. So the one option for any any time you're driving, the option is either the clients rent a car, uh, hopefully through us, through with Hertz, and then do all the driving themselves, where they pay for a service of having a private car and their own driver, either a driver plus another person guiding or someone who is licensed to do both driving and guiding. Um, so it, there's a, obviously a different price point there. It's really what it comes down to is if your clients are comfortable driving themselves and wish to have the freedom of a car rental or if they would like to have someone else do the driving and have the benefit of having a, a licensed guide tell them about things along the way. And while uh, Tammy's looking up the price of the splendors of Spain without air, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, question on what tow properties, which is a good question because there's some of them uh, we're providing that you normally would find and some uh, we don't, and I think yeah. maybe talking a little bit about what it is that we require in choosing the properties. Yeah, so Relay and Chateau properties, yes, we do sell some, uh, some of our accommodations would be a part of the branding of Relay and Chateau. 
um, just like we have other hotels that are part of the branding of related salons, let's say, uh, or small, small luxury hotels. Lots of hotels belong to different marketing brands. As far as Avanti is concerned, when we choose our hotels, we are looking at uh, what does this hotel have to offer that is special to this destination? We, we really want people, when they wake up, to feel like they are in that city or that country, as opposed to, I felt like I could be anywhere in the in the world. Now, there's a time and place for that. Sometimes, you know, we do still offer, you know, chain hotels, and there are reasons behind that. But in essence, we want people to really feel like they're a part of the area that they're staying in. We are looking for places that are typically family run or part of a very small hotel group uh, local to that region or that country. We're looking for things that are slightly, um, maybe have a special feature or are more intimate to give you, your clients really um, just a special trip, mm -hmm. something that they'll remember, not just the places that they went to, but the actual places they stayed at. And now that's Splendors of Spain question. I think it's so, a, great, a great itinerary. Yeah. So the, there's a question, what is the price point of the new Splendors of Spain without the air? Um, the package is on 60, page 61 of the new brochure, and the, the from price that we've listed is twenty four sixty nine per person, which... Is that based on three-star or four-star? Um, it's based on four-star properties throughout, and it's based on middle season. Of course, mm -hmm. there's a low, a middle, and a high season. So depending on the dates, of course, the, the rates will fluctuate. Of course, mm -hmm. they can also do three-star properties or five-star. So it's just a a from price for that one. And there's some good couple of questions as far as that uh, Southern Italy yeah. uh, uh, Matera ops, option. Right. So uh, somebody was asking, does Matera include a cave hotel? Yes, we do offer um, cave hotel, the Sextantio Hotel right in Matera, which is beautiful four-star superior cave hotel. Um, very, very unique and gorgeous. So that is a definite yes. And another question was, how do you get from Sorrento to Matera? Um, you could drive if you didn't want to do our set package, but if you were referring to the, the Splendors of Southern Italy, we do have a private driver, um, a car and driver that takes you from Sorrento to Matera, um, and then again from Matera over to the, the region of Puglia. So most easily all, drive drivable yeah, because that's the train. It's all inside of what is included in that in that uh, in that package. Yeah, yeah. Vacation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, somebody else. Oh, she. She's left, but she's asking if we have experiences in Lake Como or the Lakes region. Region, yes, we do have quite a few different tours: cooking, walking, boating, all kinds of experiences in the lakes of Italy. The northern lakes. The northern lakes. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna go to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong button. Uh, so maybe talk a little bit about, I mean, this is important because we get questions about this, whether it be the reservations in the call center, uh, people emailing us, you know, the ferry system in connecting the, the various islands, I think, is is, is really important. Um, so we do offer some ferries um, that we book for clients, but they are mostly from now we've expanded them out. When we used to just offer them during the, the three peak months of summer, we do we do now offer them from May 1st through mid-September is when we usually book the ferries, but it's within Greece. So we don't book the ones from from Bari, for example, so across from, from Italy to Greece. Um, those ones aren't ones that we actually book, but we do offer the ones through out to Santorini, to Mykonos, to Crete, to Paros, to Noxos, all the, the Greek islands that we're actually offering right now. So um, Try to keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple because it's a very tedious thing to, <laughs> to keep track of with three different ferry companies and lots of different schedules that, that come out really late. Um, I don't see either of the Santorini hotels in the picture. So we have quite a few hotels in Santorini. Um, we've had four or five new ones, so we just listed them underneath the featured ones as we also offer these additional properties just because we have very limited brochure space, but they're in there. Um, and then the... Uh, Talking a little bit about the combination of the, the, the summer in the Swiss Alps and mm -hmm. then uh, Ticino and Lugano. Yeah, so our our uh, packages, really, we call them regional highlights and recommended vacations. And it's just to give you an idea or a starting point, you can almost always customize those or add additional nights. So 
you know, starting at two nights in Bengen, you can do the inclusions that are there. If somebody wants to stay longer, absolutely, they can definitely do that. Uh, as far as the tickets and the cards that are used for the cities, we have them in some of our packages, but this is something that happens in, throughout Switzerland in many uh, cities and in many regions where it's the local uh, tourist board that is that is doing this. They're providing the ticket or the card at any hotel that you book. When you check in, you're given a card for the duration of your stay at that hotel. It works on public transportation. So we're talking about buses and trains. Uh, specialty things like funicular railways, you would get a discount. Um, maybe like paddle steamboats, you would get a discount. Uh, one example I gave for the uh, when you're in Ticino on the private Ticino tour would be to go to Ascona. You could do that on the train that would be included in the Ticino ticket. If you were to go on a boat ride, maybe out to the Prisago Islands, which is really amazing, the fantastic botanical garden there, the boat ride would not be included because it's on a lake that is shared with Italy. So because it's a, a lake that's in two countries, the ticket doesn't work on there. They would buy an additional ticket. So it's mainly for the public transportation, any kind of specialty transportation, you would get maybe a discount on by using that ticket or card. Maybe talk a little bit about the, the, the Munich uh, foodie option and, you know, going to the virtual and Mark and all that stuff. Uh, you know, what's, in, I mean, the, you know, the inclusions are what, you know, the, what the, what the guide uh, has, has uh, already arranged. Right. So all the tastings and everything would be right. prearranged. Yeah. And then um, there's a couple of, of other good questions. Uh, I'm gonna some of these I'm gonna uh, address uh, off uh, after the webinar uh, via email. Uh, but um, we do have a couple of questions that are in regard to the physically challenged uh, and. It's really important to understand that you know some countries do better than other countries with the physically challenged, uh, and since we're often combining multiple countries, you really need to make sure that you, that we Avanti become aware of what your clients' needs are uh, before we're putting these complex itineraries together, uh, because of you know location. Uh, it may be that we're actually they're they're so physically challenged that we're not actually able to uh, to put the itinerary together so uh it's it's important to, to we've got a form that's available online uh it's being updated soon uh, but it's important to let us know uh, what their physical challenges are uh right up front and, as, and be as, as frank and, and truthful as possible um it's a it's a constant challenge of you know we don't know what all the clients' needs are, and and they're on their trip, uh, so it's very important to, to let us know up front. A lot of the things are very independent and active, yeah. so we really need yeah. to know that it's not. But Europe is definitely better than Latin America or or uh, or Asia for the physically challenged. Uh, Can I just? Yep, Sorry. of course. Totally different. I was just going to answer a couple of questions on people were asking the minimum or maximum numbers on certain packages that we were talking about. They're actually um, all independent. The minimum is one and the, the maximum is 16. Is yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's not um, joining as part of a group. It's actually a, a package that we put all the components together and we're just offering it basically on private basis. So, yeah. All right, and then we had uh, a couple of questions with regard to um, uh, moving around here with regard to the uh, brochure. So uh, I'm just going to kind of uh, address this one, and then uh, we'll we'll call it a day. Uh, so our brochures can be ordered online. Uh, you can go to avantidestinations.com, and under Agent Resources, there's a line that says Order or Download Brochures and Flyers. You click on that link, and uh, it'll take you to the brochures, page, brochures and flyers page. And there's a big green button that says "Order Brochures." You click on that, and uh, you'll be uh, taken to uh, uh, another website, and that's where you can order the brochures. And uh, we'll in you know, numbers of one to uh, depending on on uh, how much you know whether you're an A, B, or C. Uh, client, so we have we do have maximum quantities depending on how much business you give us. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you're only able to order five, 
um, you know, we can we can help you out. Just, uh, you know, give us a call or book online a little bit more often. Um, <laughs> how do you like that plug? Anyway, uh, with that, uh, we're gonna I'll follow up with a couple of you folks that had some really good questions that we need to order or we need to address uh, individually. Uh, and we'll we'll take care of you. Uh, but with that, uh, we'll uh, you know stay in touch. Uh, sign up for our newsletter if you're if you aren't already, and uh, we'll let you know when our new next webinar is. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Have a great day.